Hello, America. I'm Mark Levin, and this is Life, Liberty, and Levin Sunday. You know, we hear a lot about the law, the Constitution. Most of it is superficial. Most of the information you get about it from the media, especially news platforms, is false. Some of it outright lies, much of it influenced by the Democrat Party and the Democrats within the media and so forth. One of the issues that's been front and center is impeachment, impeachment of Mayorkas, the secretary of DHS, a cabinet officer. And what you're hearing, the mantra is, you don't impeach somebody based on policy differences, and you don't impeach somebody and open the door wide so that they can then return and impeach you. Of course, we get this mostly from people who brought two outrageous impeachments against Donald Trump that do not stand, stand on the Constitution. So let's dig into this briefly. You'll be more knowledgeable than any legal analyst any former federal prosecutor, any former federal judge, or anybody else on TV and radio, and I'll tell you why. The greatest book ever written by impeachment was written in 1973 by Raoul Berger. He's deceased, but the former professor at Harvard Law School. And he was acknowledged as such, probably the greatest constitutional scholar of modern times. And he wrote a book, Impeachment, the Constitutional Problems, as I say, in 1973. Stick with me. I just want to give you the basis for this. What exactly is a high crime? You've heard people say impeachment is whatever Congress says it is. No, it's not. It is a constitutional process. Congress has limitations, too, but it also has obligations. Well, what do we mean by misdemeanors, actual crimes? No, high crimes and misdemeanors never meant actual crimes. Listen to this. High crimes and misdemeanors are a category of political crimes against the state. What's a political crime? It's not a criminal code crime against the state. What they meant by that is an attack on the society, on, on the civil society, on the culture, on the governing system and so forth. Not policy disagreements, not even strong policy disagreements. You take an oath to uphold the Constitution. If you're not upholding the Constitution, if you're rogue and you're violating federal law, that is a political crime against the body politic. That's what they mean by that. Whereas misdemeanors per se uh, describe criminal sanctions for private wrongdoings. He goes on, he says, high crimes and misdemeanors appear to be words of art confined to impeachments without roots in the ordinary criminal law and which, so far as I can discover, he said, had no relation to whether an indictment would lie in the particular circumstances. What the framers of your constitution did is they spent an enormous amount of time debating impeachment. The first issue they debated the most was this creation of an executive, a presidency, what it would look like, and so forth. And so the second biggest issue was impeachment. They looked at English common law. They went back all the way to the 1300s. They looked at how parliament handled, quote unquote, impeachment vis-a-vis -vis the king. And they, they looked at as much historical information as they could in order to come up with the language. They rejected maladministration because they thought, well, if we say maladministration is a basis for impeachment, then Congress will always be able to blackmail a president. So it's not what Congress says it is. It's what the framers of the Constitution meant it to be. What is the language in the Constitution? Article 2, Section 4. The president, vice president, and all civil officers, that would be cabinet secretaries, of the United States shall be removed from office on impeachment for and conviction of treason, bribery, and other high crimes and misdemeanors, and other high crimes and misdemeanors. The path by which the framers arrived at this language is traceable in the records of the Constitutional Convention itself through Madison's notes. So we know where this comes from. Some uneasiness apparently was excited by the breadth of the power of impeachment, for there were repeated assurances that impeachment was meant only for, quote, great injuries, quote, great misdemeanors. James Iredell, later on the Supreme Court himself, told the North Carolina Convention that the occasion for its exercise at his impeachment will arise from acts of great injury to the community, to the nation. Impeachment, said Governor Johnston in that convention, quote, is a mode of trial pointed out for great misdemeanors against the public, great offenses against society. From James Wilson, Wilson was a great delegate from Pennsylvania, his expression of hope in the Pennsylvania Convention that impeachments, quote, will seldom happen, it is inferable that he, too, was concerned only with serious misconduct. 
So the question is whether the impeachment of Mayorkas was policy, maladministration, and therefore illegitimate, as the Democrats and the media and three Republicans keep telling you, or whether it was legitimate. So let's actually look at the articles of impeachment, which I don't think any news platform has done, and actually read from some of this. Is it policy? Is it politics? Is it opinion? Or is it clear violations, intentional, repeated violations of law, pattern of lies to the other branch of government, Congress, and to the American people? Number one, Alejandro Mayorkas willfully refused to comply with the detention mandate set forth in Section 235B2A of the Immigration and Nationality Act, requiring that all applicants for admission who are not clearly and beyond a doubt entitled to be admitted shall be detained for a removal proceeding. Instead of complying with this requirement, Mayorkas implemented a catch-and-release scheme whereby such aliens are unlawfully released, even without effective mechanisms to ensure appearances before the immigration courts for removal proceedings or to ensure removal in the case of aliens ordered removed. Number two, Mayorkas willfully refused to comply with the detention mandate set forth in another section of federal law, 235B1B2 of such act, requiring that an alien who is placed into expedited removal proceedings and determined to have a credible fear of prosecution, quote, shall be detained for further consideration of the application for asylum. Instead of complying with this requirement, Mayorkas implemented a catch and release scheme where such aliens are unlawfully released, even without effective mechanisms, to ensure appearances before the immigration courts for removal proceedings or to ensure removal in the case of aliens ordered removed. Two violations of the federal immigration law. Clear as day. But there's more. Three, Mayorkas willfully refused to comply with the detention set forth in Section 235B1B34 of the Act, requiring that an alien who is placed into expedited removal proceedings and determined not to have a credible fear of persecution, quote, shall be detained until removed, unquote. Instead of complying with this requirement, Mayorkas has implemented a catch-and-release scheme whereby such aliens are unlawfully released, even without effective mechanisms to assure appearances before the immigration courts for removal proceedings or to ensure removal in case of aliens ordered removed. That's why people say, follow the existing federal immigration laws. We don't need any more laws. The laws are extensive. They are precise. They require people to be held. They require people to be deported. It gives them certain due process rights under administrative law judges. All of that's been bulldozed by Mayorkas and Biden. Four, Mayorkas willfully refused to comply with detention mandates set forth in Section 236C of the Act, requiring that a criminal alien who is inadmissible or deportable on certain criminal and terrorism-related grounds, quote, shall be taken into custody when the alien is released from law enforcement custody. Instead of complying with this requirement, Mayorkas issued, quote, guidelines for the enforcement of civil immigration laws, which instructs Department of Homeland Security, DHS officials, that, quote, the fact an individual is removable non-citizen should not alone be the basis of an enforcement action against them, and that DHS personnel should not rely on the fact of conviction alone, even with respect to aliens subject to mandatory arrest and detention, pursuant to the law. So he supersedes the law with a memo. Number five, Mayorkas willfully refused to comply with the detention mandate set forth in Section 241A2, the Immigration Act, requiring that an alien ordered removed, quote, shall be detained during the removal period. Instead of complying with this mandate, Mayorkas issued, again, his own memo, guidelines for the enforcement of civil immigration laws, which instructs DHS officials that the fact an individual is a removable non-citizen should not alone be the basis of an enforcement action against them. Wow. Personnel should not rely on the fact of conviction alone. So personnel must not rely on the specifics of federal law. Instead, Mayorkas writes his own law. Number six, Mayorkas willfully exceeded his parole authority set forth in Section 212D5A of federal law that permits parole to be granted only on a case-by-case -case basis, temporarily and for urgent humanitarian reasons or a significant public benefit. Now, how did he violate that? A, he paroled aliens en masse in order to release them from mandatory detention, despite the fact that a United States Court of Appeals for the Fifth Circuit concluded in 2021 
Quote, paroling every alien DHS cannot detain is the opposite of the case-by-case -case basis determinations required by federal law. B, Mayorkas created, reopened, or expanded a series of categorical parole programs never authorized by Congress for foreign nationals outside the United States. He wrote his own laws, including for certain Central American minors, Ukrainians, Venezuelans, Cubans, Haitians, Nicaraguans, Colombians, Salvadorans, Guatemalans, and Hondurans, which enabled hundreds of thousands of inadmissible aliens to enter the United States in violation of the laws enacted by Congress under the Immigration and Naturalization Act. Number seven, Mayorkas willfully exceeded his release authority set forth in Section 236A of the law that permits in certain circumstances the release of aliens arrested on an administrative warrant in that Mayorkas released aliens arrested without warrant despite their subject to a separate applicable mandatory detention requirement set forth in federal law. Now, what are the consequences to the country? The case that he has committed a high crime is beyond dispute. These aren't policy arguments. I spend more time on this program unraveling the lies in the media, the lies by the Democrat Party, and quite frankly, the lies by the rhinos led by Mitch McConnell than I do anything else. Because I have to be a counterweight to all the propaganda that's being pushed out there. The consequences have been devastating as a result of his committing high crimes and misdemeanors, high crimes specifically. That is, crimes, political crimes against the body politic. During fiscal years 2017 through 2020, an average of about 590,000 aliens each fiscal year were encountered as inadmissible aliens at ports of entry on the southwest border or apprehended between ports of entry. Thereafter, Mayorkas' tenure in office, that number skyrocketed from 590,000 to 1,400,000 in 2021, over 2.3 million in fiscal year 2022, over 2.4 million in fiscal year 2023. Similarly, during fiscal years 2017 through 2020, an average of 130,000 persons who were not turned back or apprehended after making an illegal entry were observed along the border each fiscal year. During Mayorkas' time in office, the number more than trebled to 400,000 in fiscal 2021, 600,000 in fiscal 2022, and 750,000 in fiscal 2023. During Mayorkas' tenure as Secretary of Homeland Security, the immigration court backlog has more than doubled from about 1.3 million cases to over 3 million cases. The exploding backlog is destroying the court's ability to administer justice and provide appropriate relief in a time frame that does not run into years or even decades. During Mayorkas' tenure as Secretary of Homeland Security, approximately 450,000 unaccompanied alien children, minors, have been encountered at the southwest border, and the vast majority have been released into the United States. As a result, there's been a dramatic upsurge in migrant children being employed in dangerous and exploitive jobs in the United States. Sex slavery, pornography, same with young girls, same with women, same with some men. What's going on the border is inhumane, it's anarchy, it's chaos. It's slavery, sex slavery, other forms of slavery. Drug cartels are making tens of billions of dollars. Now we have a problem with communist Chinese nationals pouring into the country. We have no idea who they are. They're not properly vetted. We don't have the personnel. The personnel that they wanted to hire under the phony bipartisan act would be basically rubber stamping entry, rubber stamping parole, rubber stamping the illegality that Mayorkas and Biden have already set into motion. Mayorkas' failure to enforce the law drawing millions of illegal aliens to the southwest border has led to the reassignment of U.S. Border Patrol agents from protecting the border from illicit drug trafficking to processing illegal aliens for release. Mayorkas has degraded public safety by leaving wide swaths of the border effectively unpatrolled, as U.S. border agents are diverted from guarding the border to processing for unlawful release the heightening wave of apprehended aliens. During Mayorkas' tenure, the U.S. Border Patrol has encountered an increasing number of aliens on the terrorist watch list. In fiscal years 2017 through 2020, combined, 11 non-citizens on the terrorist watch list were caught attempting to cross the southwest border between ports of entry. 11 in a three-year period. 
That number increased to 15 in fiscal 2021, 98 in fiscal 2022, 169 in fiscal 2023, and only part of this year, already 49. And keep in mind, we don't catch them all. There are hundreds of millions of people coming into this country called Godaways. We don't know a damn thing about them. And the ones we catch, we almost don't know a damn thing about them. Those cops, the NYPD in New York, who were assaulted, who were beaten by illegal aliens. Most of those illegal aliens who attacked them were part of a vicious Venezuela gang, now an international gang. We now have in our country this vicious Venezuela international gang teaming up with MS-13. We didn't have this three years ago. All kinds of consequences, economic, criminal, um, so forth. Our sovereignty is being destroyed. And of course, our enemy is going to try and push as many of their spies into our country as possible. Now, don't tell me these aren't impeachable offenses, that these are policy differences, or that we're opening Pandora's box to future impeachments. We're opening Pandora's box to future impeachment for those who deserve it. I just read to you, and I could have read more. Of the articles of impeachment citing specific sections of a federal law that's been in place for decades, the Immigration and Naturalization Act, duly passed by Congresses, duly signed by presidents with amendments and so forth. And so Joe Biden and Mayorkas have decided they're going to change our federal immigration law, whether we like it or not, whether Congress likes it or not, and you're not going to have a damn thing to say about it. And so he issues 94 executive orders in his first days in office to open our borders, to violate federal law, to change parole, to change all the conditions for people to come into this country. He's attracted millions of people trying to get into this country. Our southern border has been destroyed. Our northern border is being destroyed. Our cities are being destroyed. And I might add our culture. People are not assimilating into our culture. It is being destroyed from many one, e pluribus unum. Now it's the opposite, from one many. And Joe Biden has done this. He could stop it. They used this phony bipartisan bill, which had about four Republican senators supporting it, Mitch McConnell, the lead, which would have enshrined every single violation of law I just told you about, every single violation of our, our criminal statutes, every single problem that we are facing would have been enshrined. They would have waved it around like a Neville Chamberlain type saying, see, we have a bipartisan agreement. Everybody, you're safe. Everything is fine. It's not a problem. Now you know what impeachment is really about. And now you know that Mayorkas deserved it. And even more, the same article of impeachment should be issued now against Joe Biden. Joe Biden is the biggest slaver in American history by what's going on on that border. And it's on his watch due to his policies. And nobody gives a damn, certainly not his media. And it's being done intentionally and purposefully. The same conditions for a high crime apply to Joe Biden. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.